Hey guys, I'm Jacqueline at Jacqueline Joyce. Welcome back to Stutter Girl, where you can get a little bit into the mind of a stutterer. Thank you for joining me. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back. I'm actually here with one of my really, really, really good friends. Her name is Lori, and we're gonna sit and chat a bit. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a support group for people who stutter. Yeah. And Lori actually came to me and asked it if she she could come and that meant a lot knowing that someone that I care about and cares about me is interested in knowing about uh this thing that I have well I think it's just um really wonderful that you're so open about it um because I think a lot of the times when um someone feels like an other for some reason or another, you know, whatever it is, they um, can sometimes isolate themselves because you feel like, I don't know, like insecure about it or you um, you just aren't really ready to have other people sh share that with you. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like where there's an opportunity for me to learn more about something I'm going to take that opportunity. So I really just appreciate you being open enough to allow me to go with you. Thank you. And, you know, it's weird because this is something that I never would have thought that someone would have cared to do. Mm. And so, you know, over time I've become more open with sharing. Mm. But... Finding someone who's who's genuinely wanting to, um, I guess, figure out a little bit more about it makes me feel really good. So, thank you. Girl, please. And I think they're rare and you're one in a million. Well, I think community is important. And I think um, for all of us, like, our community is much bigger than we think it is sometimes. And... Um, I'm really excited to get to know, like, the stuttering community and see what I have in common with some of the people that experience stuttering. Because while I'm not a stutterer, like, I know what it's like to be afraid to present yourself for some reason or another. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that, um, like, you can learn a lot from getting to know other people from other communities and expand your own community that way exactly i'm actually really excited about you going to the support group tonight i don't know what will happen i don't know who will be there if anyone will be there i don't know it's gonna be fun so we'll see you guys a little bit after we're gonna do a recap and then talk to you guys a little bit about it and what is a trip to support group without a little bit of subway entertainment of course I'm wor working specifically right now on slowing down my internal alarm clock with speaking because I think a lot of my force with stuttering is because I'm, I have um, internal time issues of like... You put a lot of yeah, time pressure on yourself. A lot. And I... We're back. We're back. <laughs> Uh, we just came back from support group, which was really cool because we had a lot of people there tonight. Which, you know, sometimes there's a lot, sometimes there's a uh, little. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount for how cold it is outside today was actually pretty good. Right, and it is extremely cold. Thanks, NYC. What is this, winter? <laughs> no, it was a great crowd, and then there were um, people who stuttered, and there were people who didn't stutter. It was an, it was an interesting mix, and I didn't feel like I was the only one there who didn't stutter yeah which was good to know because i didn't want to feel like i was like invading people's safe space too oh that's lovely also most of the people who were there who did not stutter were um students who were in school for speech pathology mm -hmm. and so they uh were like trying to understand the psychological and the brain of a stutterer and whatnot yeah so you know you were the only supporter there i think Yay! What new did you walk away with that maybe you 
didn't know about stuttering to start with. It was definitely interesting because we've had this conversation about like stuttering on your name. And so to go around and have everyone introduce themselves and like everybody stuttered on their names. And I was like, cause you, you know, you think that the stuttering comes from like something, you know, having a conversation that you're not particularly comfortable with or something like Mm -hmm. that. But, um, I didn't realize that people who stutter stutter more on like the words that they can't change, Mm -hmm. like their names. I didn't know that. I can't really say that like I walked away with any one thing because it seemed that everybody's experience of stuttering was a little bit different. I think that, um, you know, it's awesome to have the support group so that you can, you guys have that common commonality with stuttering. But, um, I think, I think what I got was a lot of very unique experiences of stuttering. So if anything, um, you know, I don't think, I certainly don't think all stuttering is created equal, you know, that's something I definitely got out of it. Um, there were people there who stuttered and they, and they looked straight on, like they didn't have, uh, the different physical, um, secondary habits like what you just saw there that is my secondary habit which is to close my eyes when I stutter which is a habit I started as a child that I'm now um, trying to alleviate there's variations of stutters and yeah I think what's really actually kind of cool about stuttering is that each person creates their own stutter. Mm. Whoa, wait, what? Yeah. And so you, no two people stutter. That aha. Uh-huh. I, I, just, I just dropped a bit <laughs> of knowledge on that. you. I just, I just opened you. Yeah. Um, yeah. No two people stutter the same. You said they create their own stutter. Yeah. You... So, most people start out with these same, like, blah, 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 blah. Over time, we adapt tricks Mm. or so on to hide it or to help us to um, speak with more ease that may have worked then, but then hinders us in the future. Mm. And so we all end up creating our own coping mechanisms that then turn into the stutter. So, yeah, we all have our own stutter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite an interesting thing. Well, yeah, I mean, and it's, I think, like, for a person who doesn't know anything about stuttering it's a I mean it was an especially teaching moment for me because uh where some people they don't really need to take that much time they can kind of like their words flow a little bit better than some other people's um and so it's like again like we were saying like kind of a, a lesson in patience like someone was talking about how they really enjoyed just the the idea that people will take their time and listen to you, um, and it's like a safe space for that. I mean, I appreciated that, even you know, even though I wasn't uh, participating as a person that stutters, but that's having that safe space is like a really dope thing for anyone to have. Like, I think that if you don't have like a support group that you go to for whatever it is. I think it's. I think the idea of a support group is super useful because that's another thing. I haven't. I have never been to a, a support group of any kind before. Mm. Really, I definitely know how much support groups, specifically for stuttering, has helped me a lot. Um, it kind of just helps me have a place to voice things that I know that other people may not get mm. or understand. But it has also really helped me learn and see that. Everyone has their thing that they have trouble with. And 
you know, my thing happens to be visual and people can see it and hear it. Yeah. But people have other things that that really sum up a lot of the stuttering experience too. So mm-hmm. they have things that maybe they have shame with or they are afraid to um, do in front of others. Yeah. And that's like one one thing that resonated with me, with, which is what I was talking about with uh, the group leader after, after the uh, session. Um, I think a lot of people who stuttered think... Um, what will people think when they when they hear me stutter? And that definitely resonated with me because, like, you know, we've talked about in the past, I got made fun of a lot for talking white when I was younger, and so I'd be, like, uh, I'd have that hesitation talking to people because I'd be like, oh, my God, I know it's going to come. I know it's coming. Mm-hmm. And, and it wouldn't always happen that way, but it's just like a thing that I had in, in my head because I had such anxiety from experiences in the past that I exacerbated my experience of communication mm. by having that kind of like anxiety in my head where that was concerned. And so I, re- I definitely related to that aspect of stuttering where you like have this anxiety of what people will think when they hear you stutter or what people will think when they hear how you sound. Hmm. I'm so glad that you you came. It um it means a lot to me and like oh <laughs> uh because for a long time I didn't talk to people about stuttering. Like I I probably got asked my first question about it later on in life in my 20s. And so, and... You never talked about it with, like, your, your contemporaries in high school or anything like that? Not in a way that I could be honest with myself. Mm. Um, again, back then, I was still in this place of, like, I won't stutter for forever. It'll go away, you know. One day it'll just stop. Or, you know, like, I can't have this struggle for forever. Yeah. And so it wasn't an honest view. And then a point came where I was like, I have to deal with this. I must. And that's kind of when I was able to open up and really talk about how it felt and really talk about what it meant. And support group helped me with that. Otherwise, I would still deny the fact that my stutter was as severe as as it was Mm. yeah and so um so going to support groups gave you like an accountability with yourself oh absolutely wow yeah how long have you been going to any kind of support group Mm -hmm. or has it only been this one in new york no I've, i've i've actually only been to support groups here and, oh, wow. yeah, and I, I started. So all through, like, high school and... No. So wait, wait, wait. I didn't... When was the first time you met another person who stuttered? When I went to Holland's, when I went to my first stuttering intensive when I was 21. Whoa, 21. Yeah. But that's the story of, like, most people who stutter. Like, they don't know anyone else who stutters until they're an adult, and they've lived this whole life of like I've never met anyone like me and I don't know anyone who does this and Mm. and so on which is why I wanted to start this this uh web show or um yeah so I could just put a face to it and be like hey I do this too you do this there are people out here yeah you know and just kind of start the conversation but the isolation that is caused by feeling like nobody else is like you Mm -hmm. that like you can you can get into like a self-imposed isolation and I'm only saying that because I know how that feels obviously we all have our insecurities and we all handle them in different ways but isolating oneself is definitely a thing that a lot of people do and I can't imagine like having gone till your adult life not knowing anybody 
who like, shared that experience. Not knowing people that stutter, mm. then seeing like cartoons of Porky Pig and like Daffy Duck, and so oh, and they like, stutter in those. Yeah, oh. and so like seeing these cartoons that are depicted as like not smart. Yeah. Um, and they stutter, and you're like, well, they do what I do, mm-hmm. and you don't know people who stutter. Like, you see these cartoons, and then, like, you may see a uh, um, a film where a person stutters, but they're being teased. Right. And so you then form this opinion about, oh, this is me. Mm-hmm. And it's not a clear vision for a child and and that kind of carries into a, a do, adulthood mm-hmm. and so it's it takes like rewiring and reprogramming and all of that to then choose to see yourself in a new light but yeah I, I, I didn't I had no clue was I thought it- I was alone in this boat hmm was it difficult for you to make the decision to go to a support group? For a long time, even watching people stutter, like, hurt. Yeah. Like, I can imagine that. Like, I think for a lot of people, taking the step to go to a support group is, like, admitting to yourself that you have this thing. There's an issue. Yeah. yeah. I've only, like, recently even gotten to the point where watching my videos... I'm fine with it. Mm. And so, I mean, you know, because now I have to, like, sit and edit for hours. Mm-hmm. Then I'm just kind of like, all right, you know, like, this is yeah. me stuttering now. Saying but. yes and, and speaking and being supportive of your own voice is important. Mm-hmm. And being forthright, which is what you had spoke about. And yeah. I thought that that was really important because a lot of, you know, people who stutter, especially um, people in general, have a hard time owning their voice and owning yeah. their thoughts and owning their opinions. Pin- yeah. I think that, you know, specifically for people who stutter, mm-hmm. this is a step towards that. So, right. you know, having an open dialogue and an open conversation with someone you trust, which in my case happened to be my friend, Lori. Yeah. And um, it can really just open someone's eyes to see exactly what you go through or to just see a glimpse of it, which I think is really important. So I suggest you guys all do it. So, like, it gets it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. It actually does. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Go um go to a local NSA support group. Yeah, they man. are there's tons of them all over the country. Talk to you guys later. It's peace, love, and soul. Stutter on, stutter beautifully. Bye. Bye.